This time on The Gadget Show, we've got the monopoly on tech. Pollyanna and I take to the streets of London to compete in our own action-packed, high-energy game of Monopoly. Array on your tail, Dealey! We've swapped the hotels and title deeds for a bootload of gadgets and personal transport in a race across the capital. Oh, you're taking people everywhere! Also on this week's show, John gets all cosy with some high-tech wood-burning stoves. And I seek out the very best of this year's blockbuster video games. Yeah! That's what I'm talking about! And welcome to The Gadget Show. Yes, and this week it's these two gadget tykes up against <laughs> each other in a fraught and exciting challenge. Yep, our challenge is based on the world's most successful board game. Oh, Boggle! Say it's Boggle, I love Boggle. Strip Boggle! No, no, no. Have you no. played Strip... We're talking about Monopoly. Strip Monopoly! <laughs> I love it! I thought it was just oh, me that played that. Connect Four. John's really good at Connect yeah, Four. Yeah, yeah. Nice. We've yes. decided it's Monopoly. Cluedo! No! Monopoly! OK. Oh. Hey, does Buckaroo count as a board game? <laughs> Our Monopoly challenge began underneath one of the most iconic of our capital's landmarks, the London Eye. Thanks. Dear Otis and Polly, your challenge this week is to play a high-tech game of Monopoly. Great, great. Uh, you must compete against each other in a race across London to all four of the train stations on the Monopoly board. The first leg of our race would take us to King's Cross Station and we'd be using augmented reality sat-navs to get there. But in keeping with the Monopoly board layout, we would each have to visit an income tax square. For me, this would be Downing Street, home of the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Whereas I would have to call in at the Treasury. <laughs> I'm excited. Bring on the dice. Die. Whatever. Whatever. In true Monopoly style, we roll to see who'd go first. Seven! Get in! And how many minutes head start they'd get. What's that? No! <laughs> 12. So 12 minus 7 gives me a five minute head start. <laughs> five minutes was a huge advantage. I wasted no time in getting my tech sorted. I'm going to use Wikitude, which is an augmented reality satellite navigation system. Wikitude Drive is a mobile app for the HTC Desire that uses augmented reality to overlay a virtual world onto the real one which in simple terms means that it adds driving or walking directions into the live camera images on your smartphone screen. Otis may have had a five minute head start, but that gave me time to get my augmented reality route sorted using Leia on the iPhone 4. Like Wikitude, Leia works using the phone's camera and GPS to identify your location. You then search its database for anything from tube stations to restaurants. I added train stations so the direction of King's Cross would show up as a blue dot. Ah, there it is. So King's Cross is in that direction. I've got to head for the Treasury, so let's see where the map's going to take me. Unfortunately, Wikitude's navigation wasn't taking me by the most direct route. This is now up the stairs and over the bridge. I was quite impressed with the augmented reality, but just as I got across the Millennium Bridge, I lost my 3G signal. OK, now I'm in trouble because I can't get a signal. Come on, catch up! I had to go via Downing Street for my income tax waypoint, and I found it by adding a layer of local attractions. I'm hoping this will get me there a little bit quicker and so I can catch up some time. But the main problem with Leia is that it doesn't actually show you the route, only the general direction as the crow flies. So there's my pin, so it looks like Downing Street's just behind these buildings here, but I'm going to have to cross over the road and then turn right. I wasn't far from the Treasury, but I kept getting delayed by my 3G signal dropping out. Eventually, it held long enough for me to get my bearings. OK, so this is the Treasury building. There, income tax. Seen it? Look! Just over there, I can see my income tax sign. I just need to cross the road. Oh, it's all green. Let's go. I'd managed to make up some time and got to Downing Street just as Otis was arriving at the Treasury. Thank you very much, Leia. Once we were at our income tax stops, we had to take a chance. You've forgotten your password. Wait one minute while it resets. <laughs> no time delay. Carry on. OK, that means I've got to get straight onto King's Cross and win the race. Otis's problem with his phone signal had allowed me to catch up and his chance time delay meant I was now in the lead. But because Leia doesn't provide detailed navigation, I needed some real directions, so I had to switch to Google Maps. Let's go. 
With my one minute wait over, I was back in the race. Unfortunately, Wikitude wouldn't recognize King's Cross Station as a destination. Euston. In the end, I entered Euston Road as my destination as I know that's where King's Cross is. I was following a combination of maps and markers on Leia. That way. But then I lost my 3G signal. My markers disappeared and I've got no direction whatsoever. It seemed to me that Wikitude had taken me on a guided tour of London, but eventually I arrived at Euston Road. I'd got back my signal and was only about half a kilometre from King's Cross Station, but then disaster struck. No, you are kidding me. It's died. That's under two hours. Whole battery, gone. Luckily, I could see the station at the end of the road and ran like the wind to get there before Otis. There it is, King's Cross just ahead. Looking round, can't see Otis anywhere. Looks like I might have just got this one in the bag. i done it. Victory was mine. Except it wasn't. No! Oh, bless her. Look, she's celebrating. No! <laughs> Come here. How? Combine the tech with the athleticism equals winner. Ah, oh, good oh, running, guys. I really enjoyed that. You know why? Because augmented reality in phones, to me, is just science fiction stuff. It's so exciting. Yeah, it does bode very well for the future, but there are still major teething problems. I was using Wikitude, and I would have liked a more comprehensive inventory so that I could be yeah. taken to the very doorstep of, yeah. of where I wanted to go. And Pollyanna, you had problems with Leia as well, didn't you? Oh, absolutely. Well, apart from the battery dying before I'd even got to my destination, yeah. With Leia, you're just following a marker, so you have no navigation. So this is a technology that needs fine tuning. But yeah. It does, but the, the potential oh, of it yeah. is so exciting, exciting. isn't it? Yeah. But what's more important at the moment is that Otis is winning the challenge 1 0. Is that the truth? <laughs>
Not only did it look great, but it was also rather clever. One of the most intriguing features of the Stuv is that the design incorporates a rotating central cylinder with three positions. The first position encloses the fire with a clear ceramic screen, the second closes it down for a slow burn overnight, and the last position allows you to open the stove up. Great fun, very involving. And even the whole wood burner rotates so you can direct your heat anywhere in the room. It even comes with an attachment to let you have a mini barbecue in your living room to make a lovely meal out of these very splendid Lincolnshire sausages. Delicious! Now G ratings, and this time I've taken each wood burner's energy efficiency into account as well. With three Gs, it's the Nesta Martin. I liked its thermostatic control and 78% energy efficiency, but its lack of character lets it down. The Hot Pod gets four Gs. It's only 70% energy efficient, but nearly 100% recycled, and it's by far the most interesting looking. And finally, it's five Gs for the Stuv. It's a stunning design with unique features, and it has the highest energy rating of 85%, though only when the door is in the closed position. If you want the lowdown on what is sure to be one of 2011's most talked about gadgets, then head to 5.tv slash gadget show to see what happened when our web reporter Dion South travelled to New York to get the lowdown on Google TV. Google's new service hotly tipped to change the way we surf the web at home. All that plus our usual tech news, best buys and our weekly web TV show is live right now. So do check it out. Right, now it's time to return to this week's challenge between the gorgeous Pollyanna and the equally gorgeous Otis Dealey. The challenge was a race across London using gadgets, but with a difference because it was based on the board game of Monopoly. And the idea was that they would get to each station in order. So, stage one was to get to King's Cross, and Otis just got there before Pollyanna. So we rejoin the action as they have to get from King's Cross to Marley Bay. This race would be in two parts. We would use scooters to reach a midpoint along Euston Road where we'd receive a chance card. Then we'd switch to high-tech skates to finish at Marlebone Station. Once again, we threw dice to start. Three! <laughs> oh. Four! Oh, that's one minute. OK, so you've got a one-minute head start. I jump straight onto the Micro Airflex 200. Go! It's billed as the ultimate commuter scooter, so I had high hopes of making the most of my one-minute advantage. Excuse me! 60 seconds later, I was away on my Razor Black Label Ultra Low Kick. It's actually designed for tricks and stunts, but its smooth ride meant I soon had Polly in my sights. I thought this scooter would be really quick because it's lightweight. It also has a deck made out of fiberglass and wood, which means a smooth ride with good suspension, but it was no match for Otis's scooter. Can hear you behind me! <laughs> I easily overtook Polly thanks to my sporty razor. I was worried that the small wheels was gonna make for a really uncomfortable ride. Yeah, that's good. But the razor's frame is built out of aircraft grade aluminium and the deck is double welded to give extra performance and perfect handling. I'm winning again. This isn't on! My commuter scooter was struggling behind Otis's racer. My only saving grace was a short stop for him at the pedestrian crossing where I managed to catch him up. Come on, come on, come on. I was not going to lose my lead. I tried my hardest to power over the crossing on my razor, determined to leave Polly behind. But I managed to stick with him and we hit the changeover point together. Here we'd take a chance card to discover if we'd receive any penalties. <laughs> Please say let it stop for a drink. Oh, you've lost your Wi-Fi connection. Wait three minutes. But even though I wasn't happy not getting a breather, I'd chosen some cool-looking skates, the Nordic trainers with their calf braking system. So while I'm going at speed, I'll know that I'm safe. <coughs> Gangway. So I was off again. Let's get a move on. We now had to travel a mile up past Regent's Park to reach the finish at Marylebone Station. These are the most alien skates I've ever been on. I've been delayed by three minutes, so I had some serious catching up to do on my Supreme Turbo 33 quads. These feel great, they feel fantastic, but... God, blimey, I'm not very steady on them. Now, these are fairly high-tech in their makeup. They're constructed out of micro-mesh and neoprene. It's meant to make them feel really comfortable. But I'm getting a pinch. 
on the outside of my foot. My quad skates, on the other hand, were really comfortable as I went flat out after Otis. They've got Sims Street snake wheels. It means you get a smooth ride, great grip. I just hoped I could keep my lead as I strode along on the Nordic six and a quarter inch inflated wheels. Oh, I'd give anything for a downhill slope right now. But the wheel layout combined with my tiredness meant that I started to struggle as I approached Regent's Park. These are horrible! As I built up a strong, steady rhythm, I was starting to believe I really could beat Otis. I feel like a 40 stone man gone for a brisk walk. Oh, downhill slope. While Otis was getting slower and slower, I was powering away on my quads. I had to dig deep, but my legs had nothing left to give. I'm right on your tail, oh, Dee Dee! No. Can you feel me breathing yet, Otis? Yes, I can, <laughs> and I don't like it. With every stride, Otis's bum got bigger and bigger ahead of me, and before long, I was in the lead. <laughs> How was she going so fast? Once on Baker Street, I knew we were close to Marlebone Station. I decided to stay on the road while Polly skated on the pavement, being held up by people blocking her way. Excuse me. Thank you. Thankfully, my plan worked. What are you doing over there? I couldn't believe my eyes. Otis had managed to get back in the lead. I was totally gutted. It was only a short burst up to the station, but my legs no. felt like jelly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, another victory to me, but I tell you okay. what, it was really, really close and I was absolutely shattered by the end of it. Do you know it. what? We put all of our efforts yeah, into that. Yeah, we did. Absolutely. We did. How are you liking your skates? Oh, I'm loving the boots. Well, hey, look at that. Quads making a comeback. I know. Super comfy. If you want to get your groove on, on the streets, it's got to be quads, doesn't it? <laughs> but if you want to do the tricks, then this little razor scooter is ideal. A nice bit of tech. What was surprising, actually, was that both Polly and I preferred yeah. the small wheel mm. tech, the large wheels just so uncomfortable. But what that means is that you are leading the challenge. Mm. Yes, two it does. to nil with two to go. Yeah. yeah. I was kind of, of rooting for Polly. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. going for it. Now, if you've been watching the Gadget Show faithfully over the last few weeks, you'll already know the exciting news that the dates for next year's Gadget Show live exhibition have been announced. After the sellout success of last year's show, we've added an extra day this year and the show will open to the public for five full days from the 13th to the 17th of April at the NEC in Birmingham. For more information and to buy tickets before we sell out again, go to our website at 5.tv slash gadget show. It's going to be our biggest show yet, featuring an incredible new 3D experience and a new hall dedicated entirely to gaming. And on top of that, you can come and see us slot perform a very special live version of the gadget show in our 5,000 seat super theatre. See you there. Welcome back. Now it's time for this week's top five, and it's possibly Jason's most favourite top five ever, because to research the item, he had to spend hours and hours playing computer games. Yes, the computer gaming blockbuster season is upon us. Those eagerly awaited titles are finally seeing the light of day. But which ones have been worth the wait? Here's your gaming guru to tell you more. 2010 has been an incredible year for gaming, one of the best yet. So how on earth was I going to choose my favourites? Luckily, I'm not put off by a challenge, so I locked myself away and got busy. There are some games where a joypad just isn't enough. Games where you really need to get physical. So at five, it's Dance Central for Microsoft's brand new controller-free device, Connect. The game is brought to you by harmonics, the people behind rock band, but instead of strumming on a plastic guitar hitting drums, you're dancing in space with your avatar on screen, following their moves, or not, as the case may be. It comes with over 600 dance moves from 90 routines, and my favourite, the freestyle mode. Yeah! Doesn't matter whether you can dance, or whether you five or 55, this is really exciting. In at four, it's the expansion pack to one of the world's most popular games, World of Warcraft Cataclysm. With over 12 million users worldwide, any expansion pack release for World of Warcraft is major news. Last time, Wrath of the Lich King sold 2.8 million copies in just 24 hours, making it the quickest selling video game of all time. 
Cataclysm now features a whole new storyline, new areas to explore, new characters, dungeons and graphics, which make the game look more gorgeous than ever. With thousands more people coming to World of Warcraft with the launch of Cataclysm, it looks set to keep the most dedicated of players occupied for months to come. Ever since its release, I've been a huge fan of Assassin's Creed. I was also in the first game. I went to Montreal and was scanned in as one of the characters as part of a gadget show challenge. So, it will come as no surprise that I've included the latest iteration of Assassin's Creed, Brotherhood, in my top five. The game follows on directly from Assassin's Creed 2, where you take the reins of the main character, Ezio Auditore. But this time you're now a master assassin and create a brotherhood to take on the enemy. The latest Assassin's Creed is bound to keep you gaming for months, if not years, to come. In a number two, it's probably the most eagerly awaited and delayed driving game ever. It is, of course, Gran Turismo 5. This is the game that took five years and $60 million to make. And the good news is, it looks like the latest Gran Turismo title was worth that time and money. A thousand different cars to drive in 70 exciting and glorious locations. And for the first time in the main series, online gameplay is available, damage to your car now appears, and you can even race in the dark. Gran Turismo 5 shifts driving games and the PS3 up a gear, and in my opinion, it's one of the best reasons to own a PS3. And my number one game is Call of Duty Black Ops. Call of Duty is one of the largest grossing video games of all time. It's also one of the most successful entertainment franchises ever. And the good news is that Black Ops isn't letting those standards slide. This time, rather than modern warfare, you take control of various Special Forces operatives during historic military moments, conducting covert ops in locations such as Cuba and Vietnam. Visually, it's stunning, and the environment seems to, to happen in 360 degrees. So there's lots of action coming at you from all around in a way that I don't remember happening in MW2. MW2 certainly felt more, more railway track than, than this game does. And they, that's what happens, you see, when you're too busy talking, you get a grenade in your face. I guess it goes with the job. Oh, best top five games ever, isn't, isn't it? it? I mean, I can't believe it. I remember sat with you a year ago saying, isn't this 2009 the best year ever for games? And yet here we are in 2010 and we've beaten it. These are incredible titles, but I think ultimately Black Ops deserves its position as number one. Well, the thing about this is they talk about blockbuster games, but you really feel as though you're right in a movie, don't you? The animation is amazing. Isn't it? Is. Have you noticed the facial stuff going on as well? Yeah. Uh, that's the same technology used in Avatar, the movie. That's why it looks so real. Fantastic. If you'd like to get your hands on Jason's top five games, then you can in this week's incredible competition. <laughs> right, now it's time to return to Otis and Polly's epic Monopoly-style race across London. Now, don't worry if you've missed any of it, because Jason is going to give you a recap. Yes, Otis and Polly uh, are basically locked into a challenge based on the popular board game of Monopoly, all right? Um, except they're doing it for real. They're going around the Monopoly stations. OK, so we start with King's Cross, just there, and then they move to Marlebone, all right? And then the idea is to go to Fenchurch Street, which is that one, and then over there to Liverpool Street Station. Now, we are two stages in. So far, Otis has won the first stage, which was a race to King's Cross Station, just about there. Well done, Otis. He also won the next stage, to Marlebone Station. So at this point, you're probably thinking, ooh, Polly's a little bit rubbish. <gasps> and you wouldn't be wrong. She can't win this week's challenge. She can only get back a little bit of a belief in herself, a little bit of pride, as we now head to the third stage, which is a race to Fenchurch Street. And there it is. And it's worth 200 Monopoly pounds. I think you actually made that quite clear. Thank you. Yeah. I did my best. For our third race, we'd be using the latest in commuter bikes, and it would again be over two legs. My route would take me via Fleet Street, where I would swap bikes and receive a chance card. Whereas my changeover would take place at the Strand. We both rolled a six, so we'd start at the same time. <laughs> the race is on okay. today! We were off! I went for it and took the lead immediately. Look at her, she's a bit gung-ho, isn't she? I was on a top-of-the-range commuter bike from White, the Montpellier. Weighing less than 17 pounds, I was hoping it would finally give me the edge. Nice bit of kit, this one. I'm turning right here. Good luck, Paul. I was riding the Biomega LDN, a design masterpiece that is supposed to reflect modern city lifestyle as well as reinventing urban commuter bikes. The unique selling point on this bike is its shaft drive system. It doesn't have a chain. 
Each turn of the pedals transfers power directly to the rear wheel through the metal rod that connects them, and it's highly energy efficient. This bike's fantastic. Really lightweight. Really quite comfortable. Its frame is made out of hydroformed T6 aluminium, giving it super fast steering but good stability, which meant I was keeping well ahead of Otis. I'm just about to go underneath the underpass. I need to get a bit of speed so it can at least try and take me up the hill. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Go on, come on! I was well on my way to Fleet Street and hoping that Otis wasn't having as much of an easy ride as me. Let's go, let's go. Changing gears is great. It has eight gears. I prefer a greater choice of gears. But for what it gives you, it's not bad at all. But around the corner from the Strand, I hit traffic, which my bike didn't cope with very well. This is where I lose ground. When areas are really congested like this, the bike isn't built to weave in and out of traffic. And of course, there's the traffic lights as well, and drivers like this. Whereas my Montpellier was zipping through the cars brilliantly. This is how a road bike should feel. And in no time, I was at Fleet Street. Come on! I'm nearly there! Oh, oh, wow, that was hard work. OK. Right, find some free parking nearby. Free parking in London. Surely that's impossible. I'm in the home straight now. I was just seconds behind Polly, arriving at the Strand to take my chance card. Ah, here we are. Oh, man. Six minutes. I can't wait here for six minutes. I was desperately trying to find some local free parking using the app Nosy Parker. It searches your local area for the cheapest parking around. 105 spaces. Free parking. Woohoo! OK, I'm going to get on this one, the Puma Pico. We both had folding bikes for the second part of our race, but I had to head way past Venture Street for my free parking detour. There we are, that's that. Meanwhile, I was using 45 seconds of my six minute time delay to unfold my Mezzo D10. I really wasn't enjoying riding the Puma Pico. It's supposed to have been designed to redefine city riding, but it would make me give up altogether and get the tube. Ow, I'm feeling every bump in the road. It's actually quite painful. I just hoped my free parking detour wouldn't cost me too much time. My time was finally up and off I went. This is a really unusual experience. I'm not used to riding so bolt upright. But although it was unusual, it wasn't unpleasant. And the gear changing is really smooth. I'm not clicking up or shunting down. It's a really pleasurable ride. This bike has a strong but light aluminium frame, which gives the feel and stability of a larger rigid bike without compromising on speed. Look at that! I, on the other hand, was having a rubbish time of it. Well, I mean, changing gears. But I was soldiering on regardless. It constantly just seems to be slipping. Finally, I found my free parking. Oh, it's here! <laughs> Woo! Get me off this bike now! But I was so tired. Oh, my God, I found this. I didn't think I'd had the energy to get to Fenchurch Street Station. Oh. But just as I was about to get back on for the final push, I noticed the back tire of my bike was completely flat. No wonder I was finding it such a struggle. I've got a feeling that has something to do with how uncomfortable my journey was. Luckily, a friendly black cabbie stopped to help. Yeah, that's better. The race is back on. Unfortunately, it was still just as sluggish. Meanwhile, I was loving my D10. I just can't believe how smooth and quick this fold-away bike is. The speed of the bike and fluid gear changes meant that I pretty much flew to Fenchurch Street. I just hoped I was there before Polly. Again, for the third time. <laughs> and no Polly! <laughs> oh, man, it feels so good. Slipping gears! Victory, it just, you know? Oh, God, this is testing me. The taste of it. Oh, my God, and the sun's shining and the angels are singing in here. Oh, blooming gears. I really enjoy it. I like it. I like it. It tastes good. Oh, thank goodness for this. <laughs> you have to be Polly, kidding me. I've been here for about <sighs> half an hour. Come here, darling. Tell me what happened. Well, apart from the flat tire yeah. and the slipping gears yeah. and oh, oh, and of course, 
I took a blooming chance card. I had to go and stop off and find free parking. I thought waiting six minutes was bad. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you're here. Oh, no. Oh, no. Ah, another victory. Thank you very oh, much. Oh, no. <laughs> this is just terrible. It's a, it's a Honestly, three nil. You're meant to be doing it for the girls. What's you know what? On? And I was trying. If I had this bike <laughs> all the time, I'd have been absolutely fine, but I had the Puma Pico, and that was, oh, it just scuppered everything. Yeah, it wasn't good. No, it was big not wheels. A Oh, it was awful. Those slippity gears. Yeah, slipping gears. I didn't even have to change gear, and it was slipping. See, I, I wish I'd been voting for you, you know, now. Yeah. Oh, but, don't change but, but, with the three, my friend. All right, then, I'll just be on my own team. Yeah, yeah. seriously. You do You're that. not on mine anymore. All right, I'll get right. on The situation like is, it's 3 0 to Otis with Thank one you. challenge to go, so at least you can salvage your pride. Please do so. <laughs> it's an order. <laughs> Note taken. Welcome back to The Gadget Show and our final concluding part of the grudge match that is the Monopoly Challenge between Otis and Polly. And as we go into stage four of the challenge, anyone could win. What do you mean anyone could win? That's a lie for starters. I'm three nil up, Polly couldn't catch up or possibly win. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. But she can, you say. No, yeah. she couldn't. Ah, uh, yes, she can. Because on this challenge, we are playing the Bentley Rule. The Bentley Rule? Yes. What's the Bentley Rule? Time, Jase. What is the Bentley rule again? The Bentley rule <laughs> is where the final leg has more points than the rest of the legs put, put together. together. Ah, so it's like the double money round on Family Fortunes. Oh, oh, a question. How is that even fair? It's not. Tell that to Vernon Kay, all right? And yeah. tone it down, all you right? Know what? You're Back just off. Because you think that Polly could win this. Yeah, I've every right to be upset. Blood, sweat, and tears to earn a 3 0 lead. And you're going to wipe that out with the oh, final no. round. That's not. <laughs> you are so easy to wind up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hate you too. The last part of our challenge would take us from Fenchurch Street Station to our final destination, Liverpool Street Station, using the latest electric vehicles. We both had to take detours this time. I had to go along the Thames for waterworks. And I had to go to the jail square at the London Dungeons. Otis again through the highest dice score, which meant my start was delayed by a minute. Not a good omen for my final chance to prove myself. I was off on the iScoot Max, a nippy little scooter that's powered by a 1,000 watt electric motor. <laughs> I've got absolutely no worries while I'm on this. Polly's finished. A 4 0 whitewash, I tell you. 4 0! While Otis was on his merry way, I was ready and waiting in the Weather Velo, a hybrid electric bike. Go! <laughs> Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, this is hard work. The Velo is a recumbent bike that's been converted into an electric bike by adding a 250-watt motor and some eye-catching fibreglass bodywork that fits over the top. Thing is, with this Velo, is you do actually have to be pedalling all the time in order to make the electric work. It's quite easy to ride, but it didn't feel that stable and was a bit too low down next to all that traffic. Oh. It looked like I would be forced to take it steady. This wasn't looking good for me. Oh, dear. I was having no problem zipping through the slow-moving London traffic on my ice scoot. Ah. The average speed in the city is between 7 and 10 miles per hour. 18 miles an hour, we're doing all right. It has a top speed of 20 miles an hour, although it does take its time getting there. Its battery takes about five hours to fully charge and costs seven pence for a range of 20 miles, so it's very economical. I was still battling the traffic and the non-existent suspension on the weather velo, making slow and not-so-steady progress to my waterworks stop. Ah, look! Hey! For me, things couldn't have been easier. I'd arrived at my jail stop and took a chance. <laughs> How does that work? Someone clearly knew I did not like spooky places. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was playing the Weather Velo's electric motor. Woo! So obviously give me a bit more pace, give me a bit more speed, and this is where it takes it from muscle power to electric power. It did give me a bit of a helping hand down the Thames, although I did expect it to do a bit more. But soon I'd arrived at my waterworks stop and time to choose another chance card. What does it say? You need to update your Facebook page. Wait four minutes while you update your status. That really is going to cost me right now. Polly may have thought she had problems with her four-minute delay, 
but mine were far worse. My four minutes break was over. I was back in the weather velo and on my way to the finish line at Liverpool Street Station. I knew it was going to be a long, hard slog to the end. Oh, come on! Finally, I was let out of jail, a little shaken after my ordeal, but I hopped straight back onto my iScoot Max. As I headed towards my final destination, I sensed victory and a clean sweep in the challenge. Thank you, sir. And while Otis was scooting along, I was struggling. Oh, blimey. This is a lot of effort. It seemed that the electric assist on the weather velo has stopped assisting me altogether. Your throttle's on full. It's all uphill. I'd wasted so much time in jail that the traffic had started to build up. But I took advantage of the ice scoot slender frame and safely nipped in and out of the cars. <laughs> and so I was nearly at the finish line and on track for a 4-0 clean sweep against Polly. Oh, coming through. Over here, Otis! <laughs> <laughs> what time do you call this? I got sent to prison. I did time. I did porridge. And I wasn't alone in my cell. And I'm not talking about prisoner perks. Did you scream like a girl? No, I screamed like a man in fear of his life. That sounds like a girl. Nothing like a girl. <laughs> yeah! Hang about. on. You can't both celebrate. No. No, we're not really playing the Bentley rules. Yes! But if we were... <laughs> no, if we were... You'd no. have won. If you were... Let's hug it out, girls. No, yeah. let's not bother. Um, this... <laughs> Didn't seem particularly power assisted, did it? I thought it would be really easy and then be off like a shot, but that was hard work. You're right in there. I'm all right in there. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. So we can declare that Otis Steele is the winner of Thank this you. week's yes. challenge. Now, don't forget if you've missed any of the gadget shows and you want to catch them up, you go to 5.tv slash demand5 and watch them again. Right, we'll see you soon. See Bye. Ya. Bye. Where are you going? I'm off. No idea. Free parking. Free parking. Yeah.